to help junior developers uh, come up, right? And part of that is not being afraid to fail, right? And and building that confidence to just say, I'm going to try this thing. And if it doesn't work, that's fine, you know, I'm, but I'm going to try it anyway. Um, and I think, you know, when I was, I kind of almost remember when I was starting out a hundred years ago, um, it, it was intimidating. I mean, programming development software engineering is a huge landscape and it's hard to navigate and it's hard to figure out your way. And there's so much going on and having that lack of confidence as a new developer, um, can really hamper you. And I th think one of the better. Out of curiosity, what was intimidating? Uh, what did you find intimidating when the, you started out? Well, a, uh, you know, I was working and I was coming into a job where there were, uh, senior engineers and I'm like, Oh, I don't want them to think I'm a complete idiot. You know? Yeah. Cause I, I don't know how to do you don't want thing. To think you don't, yeah. Yeah. You know? And, um, then, you know, I have to learn the, all this navigating this huge environment of stuff. Um, it's just, you know, it's just intimidating. And as, as we started this show, one of the things I started thinking about, I mean, not, not today's show, but this, this channel, one of the things I was thinking about is what would I have liked to have had available to me when I was starting as a developer? Um, and I don't think that that changes, you know, from 25 years ago when I was starting. Those, those same needs and, and wants are there. You can just get them different ways. Like we didn't have YouTube and stuff when I was a junior, but, um, you know, we had meetups and people would meet and talk about stuff and learn from each other. And it's the same kind of thing, I think. So one of the things that, that I wanted to do to talk today specifically is I think it's important for senior developers to be able to fail in public so that junior developers can see, oh, look, they, they screw things up too, and it's fine. That's, that's just part of the process. So I can go in here and try things and screw things up, and it's okay because it's just part of the process. Um, so that's one of the, one of the big reasons, there are several reasons that I like to do this live, but one of the big ones is because I want people to see this, this is us, you know, the unpolished version. Right. Of us. Yeah. I mean, this is, there's no editing, there's no scripting, there's no, none of that stuff. You know, we'll come in here, we'll stumble over words, we'll forget English, we'll, you know, I go on coding with Chris and, and look like a complete idiot a lot of the time, but it's fine because we're learning things. And so, you know, we yep. don't want to be fail in public, but um, one of the things that I've heard from several junior developers that I've talked to lately is that, that watch the show is, it, it, yeah, it was really nice to see you uh, messing things up because it made me feel better about when I mess things up. Right, especially at work, you know, messing things up when your your little funsies project at home isn't a big deal. You expect to do that, but messing things up at work, you know, you, as a junior, that's pretty intimidating. I think. So, you know, it's it's something that I'm starting to want to do more of is encourage more senior developers to start doing live coding so that the community of junior developers can see that and, and start learning things and start learning how the thinking process works and how you learn new stuff. Um, so I think it's important. Now you're going to try to convince me to, to do this as well. And, they'll, they'll, and I've been thinking about that I should probably do something, but I've, uh, I've been so busy. I know. That it's trying to, trying to, fit it in or figure out how to fit it in. But yeah, I, I mean, I've been thinking about, you know, what I can do as well. So. Right. Well, and then it's a thing like, like coming up with the coding with Chris, you know, 
I had to find a project that I could do in public because I can't do my actual work in public live, right? The yeah. NDAs and stuff. But um, so so that is a bit of a challenge. But, I, you know, I think it's just, hey, go out and do a funsies project and put and you don't have to put your face on the camera. You can just get a mic and, and show your screen if it's too intimidating at first to put your face on camera, which I know for people doing live stuff, that's the biggest hurdle is getting in front of a camera. I mean, I, I've never talked to anybody who's gotten into live stuff that didn't say my biggest problem, my biggest hurdle was just getting in front of the camera the first time. That's that's always been the answer. Um. And I think yeah, too, I remember that, my first time when I did a webinar, I was just staring blank. There, there was no other guest there. It was just me giving a presentation and I'm staring blankly into this black circle that is the camera yeah. trying to and just talking to it in the silent room was just eerie. And you don't get any feedback from another person like you don't hear another sound. Yeah. You're like, I hope this is going out there. I don't know if it's working. Right. So and, I, I went from there and being very uncomfortable to like, I turn it on. It's like, Hey, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's the thing. I think it just takes practice and it, it takes practice to fail in public too, because you have to be comfortable with your abilities. Um, and you have to be comfortable with yourself to get in front of other people and say, okay, I'm just going to figure out how this works and learn it right in front of you. Let's, you know, Let's do it. It turns out, though, that A, for me and for a lot of other people, I would suspect that's really cathartic to just get on there with chat and say, OK, I'm screwing this up. And somebody in chat will say, oh, hey, did you try this? Great. We learned something. Um, it's also fun uh, because I'm I'm having a lot of people. I'm having more people approach me through that. Because they're watching me screw up and say, hey, he's the same human I am. You know, he's not some magical thing in, in, on a video. He's just a, a dude over here programming, right? And it's much more approachable that way, I think. Um, so I'm wondering what, what more I can do to get more people to, to get into live coding. Um, I took a poll on Twitter a couple weeks back. And ask people if you if you had a free place to learn how to do live coding, to learn the technology and how to do it and, and all that stuff, would you consider doing it or you're never going to do it at all? What I was expecting was maybe, you know, like 15 or 20 percent of the responses to be, yeah, I'd, I'd give it a shot. And the rest of them, like, there's not a chance I'm ever stepping in front of a camera. It turns out that what it was was about 60% of people saying, yeah, I'd like to try that, which really surprised me. Um, so one of the things I think I'm going to do to see if I can help that out is uh, we've got a Discord channel. And I'm going to see if I can set up a time where I can just hang out in the Discord chat for like an hour a week. And let people come in and just ask questions about streaming. How do I do this? How do I set this up in OBS? How do I, what kind of microphone should I use? All that, all that fun stuff that I've had to learn over years and years. Um, see if we can shortcut that knowledge so that people can get into uh, the live streaming. So chat, I mean, if you, um, if you're not part of our discord yet, um, go ahead and join because I'll be putting up there pretty soon um, some times when I'll be hanging out in the Discord chat um, and talking about this stuff uh, to try to help you out, because I'm not quite sure what else I can do, but I can do that for sure. Um, but, you know, I think it's I, I think it's an important thing to try to put yourself out there it's important for the community to see people doing that, I think. So, yeah, I think, you know, you're saying trying to decide what to do. I mean, 
I think anyone who has contributed to an open source project, that's definitely a fair game. Oh, absolutely. To be able to put up there. So it doesn't necessarily have to be something new, or I mean, you could choose your favorite library and see, hey, is there any feature you want added to it or yeah, something like that. I'm going to work on a PR today for this gem that I use, you know? Yeah, it doesn't have to be some big project. I, I'm doing a big project, but that's because that's what I wanted to do. You know, this whole Ruby game programming thing, that's a whole different arena. And one of the reasons I picked that is because I wanted to start using my Ruby brain a different way from a Rails app. But it doesn't have to be that. I mean, if you're live streaming coding, you could just be, hey, I want to investigate you know, this, the, the new things in Ruby 3.1 today and find, do some hacking in IRB just to see what happens. Or I want to do this PR for OSS. This is our goal today is to get this PR done for this feature or fix this bug or, you know, or one of the things that I'm going to do that's, that's fun too, I, I think is going to be fun. And this, this came from uh, Marco um, on Tuesday. On the coding with Chris, I'm going to try doing, um, what's this thing called? It's called uh, Clash of Code. Yeah, Clash of Code. Um, because uh, Tuesday is my birthday, and we're going to just celebrate online. And I thought, you know, instead of just watching me code, why don't we get together and all do something together? So we're going to try this Clash of Code thing, which lets anybody, you know, it, it's like little coding challenges and you do them in whatever language and we're just going to have fun together. So it doesn't have to be any hugely structured thing. Um, it's just about getting yourself out there and, and having some fun with it and not being afraid to to just be in public with it. And I think one of the really important things to understand, you know, I titled this show Failing in Public. But one of the mantras I've had for a very, very long time is you only fail if you fail to learn. So even if you get something wrong, if you learn something from it, you haven't failed. So I'm not really failing in public. I'm learning in public. Right? I hope. <laughs> So, which I, I think, I mean, for me, at least, that makes it a little less intimidating. You know, everybody has to learn stuff. I'm learning in public. Yep. Part of learning is screwing things up sometimes. That just means I'm learning faster. So that's okay. If you like this clip and want to watch another one, you can click right here. Or if you want to watch the full video, you can click here.